Q&A time. <laughs> So, has anyone got questions? <laughs> Hi, um, the environmental lighting. Yes. You hard-coded hard the coefficients into the script so that yes. that script just rep represents that one light probe. That's right. What so what did you use to generate the coefficients from the light probe data? Um, I used Ramamurti's paper. That explains what you need to do, basically, to do did that. Did you write some software to process the Yes, I data? did. I mean, because I didn't want to make an expose of um, a lot of this stuff you would wrap up in the production pipeline. Of course, I wrap it up in, into plugins. And then you'd have a button, and you pre-filter the map. You choose the map, you hit the button, pre-filter it, which is really, really fast. It's, uh, for a 2K map, it's um, two seconds. And you only do it once, right? But um, yes, that's, that's you would write a little program, a little C or C++, um, snippet to actually um, to calculate those coefficients. But once you have them, you only need them once. And, and in the case of the fill light like that, I mean, there's no, absolutely no point um, um, computing it every time. So like you said, I, I hardwired those coefficients into that expression, the long expression that you saw, so that they never have to be calculated. Okay, thanks. I saw some more hands. Have this question has just been answered by that. <laughs> ah. Where's the hand gone? Hi. Uh, would this yeah, technique hi. work for furry creatures because of the anti-aliasing issue and detail and all that sort of stuff? Or is it really mainly for not too fine detailed, hard edged kind of geometry? Good, good, very good question. And that was another caveat. Now, with furry creatures, what you have to watch out for is not the fine detail, because like I mentioned, you can, if you take this image, oops, no, never mind. <laughs> if you take, if you take um, the geometry which we saw earlier, the normals map. Can we have the screen back, please, projection room? <laughs> can, can they hear us? They should be able to. Nice. Uh, <laughs> Is there anybody um, out there? Well, we'll, we'll, tr we'll tr I'll try explaining that without the image. But the normals map which we looked at was a relatively simple one because the geometry is very simple. But you could imagine all sorts of displacement mapping on that and, f and further detail. And that wouldn't bother us in the slightest. In fact, um, uh, this technique, the more detail there is, th the more you pick up, in a sense, because it's there in the normals map. So a hero shot will actually uh, are we, have we switched over? No, maybe not. Okay. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, so to go back to the, um, to NCAM here, this is a very relatively simple normals map, but um, any kind of displacement or fine detail um, would show up in this map and it would be, it would be picked up by the method because it's there, the data is there. Um, uh, so that wouldn't be a problem, um, the fine detail. If anything, this is very good at picking up fine detail. The problem with hair is opacity. And this is where we always have a problem and why, because it's, and where it remain two and a half D technique is always, as always, um, Z depth and opacity. So uh, to give you an idea on, on the ant bully, for example, which we did, a lot of the lighting and relighting were using techniques um, um, like that, which was all CG. Um, the hair was treated se separately. In fact, um, the, the tools would have, uh, we would have mats for the hair and that would be, that would be comped separately. Because precisely it's um, uh, Z depth and opacity are issues that we cannot, um, uh, that, uh, for which there's no easy 2D fix. Let's put it that way. Do I answer the question? Yep, thank you. Okay. Ah, uh, I see a hand. Yeah, I've just got two quick things. Um, is there no, with the anti-aliasing, is there no kind of solution like a coverage pass that you can use? Just out of interest, I don't even know that exists. I seem to have been given one in the past, some kind of extra pass that 
is pretty much just the aliasing kind of lines. What was that? Um, I just invented Well, uh, the, 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 Which would be cool if I did. <laughs> I've got no math to back it up. The trouble with the normals pass as it comes out of, for example, render man, um, uh, or in this case, mantra, same thing. Um, I shouldn't say that, should I? No, but <laughs> um, it's, uh, the trouble is that it, is, it isn't um, anti-alias because that's something which typically happens at the end of the render. And what we're doing is sort of getting, grabbing the AOV, which is the byproduct, and using it for our own, running off with it and using it for our own purposes. So that's why it's um, anti, um, not anti-aliased. Um, coverage pass, I don't quite, I'm not too familiar with, I don't think I've ever seen a really a, um, a, a coverage pass. I, I don't quite know what that would represent. But what the anti-aliasing is, is doing is a, um, is a pseudo um, anti-aliasing measure insofar as that um, we're not dealing exactly with the 3D information, but still, we're using um, we're using a kernel. It's we're oper it's a con it's a convolution with that we're doing on the image, which is very effective. It's very effective because we're still looking at an image. I mean, albeit 3D data, it's still um, a 2D image, and the colors represent the 3D data. So if if we have some form of filtering that, then we'll get much closer to something which is a lot smoother, like here. Right? A lot of the artifacting is, is, um, is um, taken away. So in practice, it turns out to be quite sufficient. Have I answered the question? Yeah, I've got one other quick one as well. Yes, the, yeah. the, the 3D kind of, the mat 3D kind of method. Yes. Is that kind of, say for example, you've got a 3D scene and then you want to kind of adjust something or kind of retexture something. And say for example, you haven't got passes. Could you use that? Kind of, I'm assuming like the kind of the point position is kind of a pixel point position, I guess. So would you be able to use that as a kind of almost like a very accurate kind of hard hard edge kind of z depth to sort of say to kind of find a location of an object? Um, it's true that um, the z the blue component, right, um, this here is it's pcam what we're looking at. So this is z information. What I'm the blue component down down here. If you look here. I'm literally looking at how far away, relative to the camera, the object is. So this is, this is a kind of depth map. Often the difference will be, um, it'll be more a question of how it's parametrized. In other words, um, the parametrization, in other words, um, um, the bounds, if you will, of the depth that we're looking at. Because if you're, if you're wanting to uh, mask a small portion of something, and it's part of a scene which is a thousand units long, then obviously if, it's, if the difference between here and there is minute compared to the overall difference, we're, we're losing information, or it's, it's inaccurate. Whereas if it's within certain bounds, then this can be highly accurate. So really the only difference between this, um, uh, the PCAM blue channel and Z depth is just a question of how you set the bounds. You can even do a P object, as in there's just relative, which of course will have uh, bounding boxes restricted to the object itself, and you can become um, it can become very accurate. Does that answer the question? It does. Okay. Good. <laughs> Thanks. Um, how? Does this method work if you're trying to use um, the normals and get mats um, to isolate areas of an object? If it's animating, don't the normals values change as that object moves away from camera or changes its angle? Excellent, excellent question. Um, it depends which space the normals pass is in. Um, for the sake of demonstration, especially with the rim light, because it's more useful, everything here is in camera space. So we're looking at N cam as I've put it here, and we're looking at PCAM. Now those, if we just co concentrate on NCAM, yes, they're going to change, uh, they're relative to the camera. But if we use an N-world pass, which is in fact is the most common pass, no, it's not going to change, because it's going to stick to, it'll always be relative to the object, to our scene. In which case, 
uh, and especially for things like fill lights and things like that. Typically, if you have a, I, I don't know, um, you're using it for a bounce light because your tank has, your CG tank has, it doesn't have, um, um, it's, it's too dark sort of underneath and it's gone to black, you have no more information, right? And you need a bounce light to lift um, that, um, those blacks. Then you don't want that thing changing in camera space. You want that light to stick to the tank, right? But the, if it's an end world pass, it won't change. It'll be relative to the tank, to the scene. But if your tank is animating around with in-world space, wouldn't the normals change anyway, if it's moving? Yes, but then it would change in a way that you would expect it to change. But if you're words, trying if to you use... Look at the, if you're looking at the tracks, for example, and you imagine the tracks rotating around um, a, a point, then obviously the lighting is going to change. If it's a bounce light and it's facing, and, and if you imagine the track and, and it's coming around when it faces the bottom, no, it's sorry, I was talking like, when you were mentioning about using it to isolate areas, maybe for colour correction as opposed to just lighting. Uh, again, um, if... Yes, I see what you mean, but then um, for, uh, if you're really wanting to get... Uh, let's imagine um, we're looking at the tracks and um, we are... Um, then, then, yes, if it's animating, then um, you are going to have a harder time. <laughs> um, it's, um, although, although, frank, although frankly, the, what you would want to do, in a, it's not the fault of the method or the information, and you're not lacking uh, in information when it comes to the data that you have to hand. What you, what you need to be doing then is tracking. If you're tracking that point, well then, your, your info will be up to date. Actually, there's a really cool way to solve that, which is to see the second half of the <laughs> <laughs> Good sales technique. <laughs> <laughs> Tal to the rescue. There you go. <laughs> Any more questions? Uh -huh. Oh, two objects come in. I was just uh, wondering if you're happy with the, in the inherent artifacts you get with um, uh, using a motion vector blur on top of that for you know animated objects that are relit. Um, well, typically, um, the way to Unless there are problems with opacity and with Z depth, like I, like I underlined earlier, sort of that can be problematic. But if it's a hard object like this, and it's in, and you've got motion blur, then the motion blur will show up in your normals pass, and um, that works fine in practice. Okay, I disagree. You disagree? <laughs> yeah, because the direction. Uh, with, with the, the actual blur baked into the normals pass, you know, the direction is meaningless at the point where it's blurred. The direction is, is, is meaningless, yes, but then you have the opacity to be taken into account with that as well, um, because that's essentially wh what happens. Um, in practice, I find, um, I mean, it worked fine for us with Hellboy. With Hellboy 2, with um, a Golden Army and whatnot, and that has significant amount of, of uh, motion blur when the shields are moving around. So I see, I get your point that it is indeed uh, you kind of question what what on earth do those values mean when um, with with the motion blur? Because of course you are, um, it, it is, it's at best stochastic sampling, which um, makes. Um, which produces all sorts of funny data, uh, depending on the speed and whatnot. It is motion, it is, um, motion blur. Uh, but in practice, um, it's, in comping, we don't care too much about that. We care more about how it looks. So um, at the end of the day, um, if you're getting some slightly erroneous information when it comes to 3D, because um, it's there in those passes, and it's obviously um, the motion blur is, is is there in the normal pass. It it um, most of the time it works surprisingly well. Okay, thanks. 
Hi, um, is there any way to feed that um, data back into 3D? Let's say you do look dev on a shot, and the, you know, the lighting TD and the compass work together on this and say, actually, I played around with this and moved the lights around a bit and you know, and the attenuation and changed that. Is there any way to feed that back into 3D? Or can you just render out an image and say, make it look like this? You're a 3D man, right? <laughs> You're a compa. Why are you asking a question? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> um, yes, in theory there is, but in practice, I don't. Um, I don't like that idea for two reasons. One, what um, a lighting TD has to hand goes well beyond this information here. So, um, and when you take into account all the other forms of lighting and all the other, um, uh, and uh, which already make up the beauty, I mean, be it color bleed, be it um, subsurface scattering and passes or whatnot, it's, um, I, I would question just how useful it is. The other thing is, I would say is, first of all, as a 2D TD, I would say that, isn't that the, putting the, cart before the horse kind of thing, isn't it the wrong way around? I mean, we want it to go this way, we want it to go to 2D, we don't want it to, get to go back, right? <laughs> well, so, so you see it as a, as a final solution rather than a look at I see it um, definitely as a final solution, as in this is what we're doing, it's, it's um, is tweaking. We're not inventing uh, or reinventing the wheel, we're not getting rid of 3D. We are um, getting rid of inefficient cycles where we throw stuff back to 3D. Where, where it's very effective in dealing with real world comping problems like, for example, um, whoops, in this CG tank, we've got no blacks here. Uh, it's all black, we've got no detail um, in here. We need a bounce light and we need to be able to control it relative to our scene, relative to our comp. Um, I see it as ways of uh, manipulating what we get, like I said, uh, matting or whatever, or using the light to actually attenuate <coughs> lighting or boost it or whatever. So yes, very much um, uh, final solutions. Tweaks, uh, which are of interest to Compass, of course, because I think, uh, as, uh, I, I think as I hope I've demonstrated, it's pretty fast. Any more questions? Hands behind me. No? Okay. Um, well, I'd like to thank Roy very much. We're going to have... Uh,